We have been talking that the yellow coral we do believe are zoanthids, so you might be correct on your thing. Um, Jason is saying that Hawaiian gold coral, the polyps will be on a zoanthid, not on an octocoral. So. And another viewer has mentioned in that uh, if you've taken any medication, it has um, tested on horseshoe crab blood. And yes, it's not just any medication, but it's also any um, shots, um, medical, anything that has to be sterilized for medical has been tested with what we call LAL, which is, um, is a... Um, is made from an extract of horseshoe blood because of that very sensitive immune system that horseshoe blood has. And it not only detects bacteria, but also endotoxins that are released from bacterial cells and can cause you to get really sick. Neat. Yeah. We have not been able to make a man-made subst uh, substitute yet for horseshoe crab blood. Right here. I'm good. Great. Jonathan, are you taking out a fixed rate right now, or are you just uh, clicking as they go? Excuse me? Are you um, taking video only, or are you doing pictures as they go? Oh, I'm doing just video. Just video okay. You can you can choose to take photos, but um, we'll, we'll do it would be better to de-interlace from the video. Okay. Uh, Dave? Yeah. Roger. Mink PC4? Yeah, that's correct. So Jonathan, how's our survey going? I think it's going swimmingly. <laughs> <laughs> so in advantage of this, you just saw that we, because we left that uh, target reference out, that's like a good known point. We stood there for a little bit of while. And we just passed it. Yep. And it will appear in a lot of the photos, and again, that just helps us align things. Although, for a feature like this, where there's lots and lots of great variation, we shouldn't have any problem with that. And by variation, I really mean contrast, not necessarily color. <laughs> Roger. I was like, hey, hey. and Jonathan, who's um, who are all these models going to go out to? Who's going to be using these models that we're creating? Yeah, so uh, we have a we have a, um, a project to create a uh, simulator that's based off of that's based off of real world models like this. Um, the goal of that particular grant is going to be to um, create a environment we're going to use unreal engine um, that uh, allows you to actually fly around uh, what we're seeing right now in virtual space the other yeah, element that we're doing is a um, well, educational resource that's right built around the same thing um, i'm looking to um, create a comprehensively tagged um, environment at a landscape level um, that uses these models to not only kind of just appear in the right uh, time and place, but to actually have all of the information, all of the incredible metadata that ROV Hercules and our Scientist Shore program collects 
all available to see and to demonstrate the power of the technology. That could include yeah. Just, yeah. That could include off, also the up. capacity to uh, click and any single one of these corals and actually read the metadata or see the video that was recorded at that moment. Kind of exploring the utility of these kind of landscape level uh, photogrammetric met models to uh, be able to explore our data in a new way. Okay. Off on the and I think direction. that that's ultimately whether you're looking at an application of uh, 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 to science or to education and outreach. That's that's the really uh, interesting uh, element of this project for me, which is um, building models, building virtual worlds like this uh, communicates the same thing in a different way. So it complements a video. Um, but what, what exploring a model does for, for a child or an adult or a kid at heart, we you know everything, um, or, or a scientist, what, what a model like this allows you to do is, is it compresses time. It takes an inherently linear experience of watching a video. You, if you watch a video, you have to watch it from the start and you have to go to the end to see everything that was seen. And it takes that linear video and it, it compresses it it compresses it temporally into a single model that you can view all at once. And if you have an idea of what you want to see or you develop a lesson plan that's around a goal, um, suddenly this becomes more of a kind of choose your own adventure, yeah. um, uh, a way of learning. Um, so instead of assigning a three hour video, you can create a model that encompasses all three hours of that observation. Okay. Um, and the point of this uh, grant just overall is is showing how um, in the last 10 years this uh, the capacity to generate this style of model and more importantly the the industry tools used to visualize them and use them has just exploded um, and that that's because of the video gaming industry yeah. right um, and so what used to be an entire PhD project um, just to, to get things like structure and motion working really well, volume estimation based off of photogrammetry models, um, the precision estimation of like um, geo-referencing individual points. Th those are those are incredibly hard pr uh, problems to solve, yeah. um, especially a decade ago with the, with the computing power that was available. Um, now, now you can do it on your desktop with uh, product, what I call production-ready tools, which essentially means that they're just supported by a much larger industry than oceanographers and research, right? Like, and, and that allows it to have that momentum, that assurance that, um, that you're not carrying or you're not creating all this custom code to make something happen. Um, so all in all, that, that's what really excites me is, is uh, what, what imagine if it's kind of that like is this a build it and they will come um it's application for vr for for xr for this new generation of learning non-linear learning being able to have children or uh, students be able to explore with goals in mind um i think that's very powerful and it's and it's backed up by the literature in terms of engagement and uh, uh, lesson learning and retention yeah um to, to present data, data like this. One of my favorite lessons um, I currently do, and I'm really excited to see this new technology and change it with this, is um, the, from the Caitlin project when they did imaging of the reefs and stuff. So yeah. I have my students do virtual dives, but they're just on their Chromebooks, you know, and they can yeah. zoom in and they can put around so they have options and they can move through the different dive sites that they did. And then they take a screenshot and they have them, I show them like, okay, this is a plate coral, this yeah. is a pillar coral, and they have to go and find and take screenshots of the different types of corals, and this is a boulder coral. And so it's kind of fun to just see them explore around the dive site. So I think this is just like the yeah, resolution absolutely. and stuff yeah. is going to be so cool on this. And then that's also just the ability, that's all sh shallower waters too on those ones. Yeah. So introduce them to this deep sea community is yeah, going to be really yeah, exciting. No. It, it's a hundred percent. Then the, the other element that, that, um, you know, you asked earlier, okay. Or, or one of our viewers asked, well, if we don't have the triclop system, is it going to have the same resolution? And, and, you know, the answer is fundamentally no. Um, but also, you know, I gave that caveated answer of like, yeah, yeah you know what, we could still do this with this camera. Yeah. Um, but for me that highlights 
the other goal of doing something like this, of pushing ahead with technologies like this, and, and that is that is the documentary effort behind yeah. it. Um, I've said it a couple of times already on this, this expedition, but, but um, the problems that we have now uh, with processing, with being able to view super duper duper high resolution models are just temporary problems. In, in X number of years, people will look back and with this project and, and the goals of this project for recording at these you know ridiculous resolutions of 6K multiple multiple cameras is is that one day people will use that data. They will 100%. Um, it might not be today, but but they will. And I view it as uh, you know our obligation as explorers that are going down have the honor of, of going down to some of these places, um, and viewing and making these discoveries. And, and and being present where where it's highly likely no one will ever go again. Yeah. To record that with as much um, with uh, as much forward thinking vision as is sustainable for, for our operations in the long term. Um, yeah, it's that, a that's that's really a, that's really the, the kind of like overarching thought behind why photogrammetry, why this style of um, this, this style of survey and, and the grant. Here's a question in the chat for you, Jonathan. Do you think this kind of imaging or generating photogrammetry models is going to be standard, like built-in features for every ROV on every research slash exploration vessel? Um, I think that this is still a specialized tool. However, um, what I will say is that that um, photogrammetry models and and this is just a one way to capture three-dimensional data of what's happening around you and um, tools like Norbit is 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 very very similar like it's the same goal the goal is to create a more realistic map of the world around the ROV in the deep sea so whether or not photogrammetry and generating photogrammetry is going to be the standard I personally think that yeah um, it's it's actually really easy to do this um, similar to how we generate maps now on the ship, it will does require process, which is why we're here. We're, he we're here to investigate process of, of, of how to deal with this style of data at volume in a sustainable way. Um, but but it's, it's, it's easy to do. Yeah. Um, it's not easy to do really well, like to, to a very high scientific standard, by no means. We, to do it well, you have to do something like this. And honestly, um, some, of the, some of the really developed photogrammetry labs out there um, uh, would, uh, that's kind of a shame, there's a little piece of trash there. Um, you know, there, there's, there's ways to increase the precision of what we're doing, the precision and the accuracy, so you can truly go back and make minute measurements of volume change, et cetera. Um, but to do, to do it as a documentary effort, and to even do really, to do it relatively imprecisely, but still really well, um, is, is easy now. Um, and so I think that the scientific community and the education community will need to look at how to deal with these data and, and what really is its utility um, to really answer whether or not this is something that continues to go out. But um, I'm certainly excited on on all of the fronts that um, and encouraged that it can be done um, pretty consistently. Uh, the problem ultimately is actually archiving. Yeah. Like, what do you do with these data after you collect it? Like, I can say, okay, well, we'll make a simulator, we'll make a game, um, we'll publicly host it. Um, but this isn't something that the actual sci like the scientific community has really uh, come up with a great answer for. Like, in the... Uh, oceanographic community, right? There's there's R2R, and I'm, I'm really speaking beyond my ski tips now, but th there's an existing repository for oceanographic data that is publicly accessible, publicly funded, right? Yes. Rolling yeah. Deck Repository. Yep. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't think Rolling Deck Repository accepts, you know, giant photogrammetry models <laughs> yet. Um, that's not stored at this point. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Maybe to go to go on to what you're talking about is it's just not the you know we're t we're collecting terabytes of data here yeah and then we're going to put it together in a model that becomes how large were the models 
Depends. Um, Usually smaller than all the piles you have. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. while they're not, you know, but, you know, once again, they're 50% smaller than what you have. But now you store all the raw data, terabytes, plus another, yeah. you know, two terabytes in the model, plus if you want to texture it. So the more you process it, the more data, you know, you have to store. Yep. And yep. then label. Yep. Yeah, I think I think museums and well, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a philosophical but not a philosophical question that is like if we do do our job and we just record this in absolutely every single pixel known to known known to known to science, um, but you can't store it and you can't guarantee that a PhD student in 15 years will be able to find it. Like, have we done our job? You know, that's 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 actually like a really big one. Museums have answers to that, but they're built. Libraries have that, um, but they're built around that concept, and and but that's not something we've really caught up to yet yeah. for for the digital world. The chat is saying in ten years from now, this will be like a Polaroid instant camera of yesteryears. Oh my gosh, you're so right. <laughs> no, I mean that. Gosh, you know when Taylor Ann and Zach they they were going through some of the original Pisces footage in preparation for this. I mean that was that was only in the nineties. Yeah. I mean, I maybe I'm dating myself, but guys, this that was just in the '90s, and it's like you're, it's like viewing this same site through a toilet paper tube, like, yeah. you know, it's so it it's so true that that hits the nail on the head. It'll be like a Polaroid instant camera, but how valuable was that to be able to look back and say, okay, well, this is what the Pisces saw. Yeah. This is what the Pisces. I mean, we're wrote. still using that data right now, though. Yeah. So I mean. But but. To me, what's really interesting is how, what forethought did X person have back in the 90s when they got back from that and they had that video file in their hand? An institution or a single individual had the forethought to keep the data organized over 30 years, to keep it accessible, to tell the right people about that data before they died. Yeah. Like these are like fundamental problems in <laughs> research where incredible archives can go missing. Um, the chat is saying we need libraries. Internet archives is one of them, but there's a lot of data. And a lot of and data. I agree. And a, one of the big problems with science, too, is this gatekeeping of knowledge, I think. And, like, unless you you don't want to get scooped on your publication and your journals and stuff like that, that I think a lot of data is lost because of that. Really beautiful flying, Simon. This is great. Yeah. Well, there's our there's a little reference point. Just the status. We're on. We're coming back on the second leg. So we already did one complete leg. Came back. They set up the second leg. Came back. So we're about halfway through coming back on the second leg. So once that's finished, we we'll start on the third leg. So it looks like probably four, maybe five yeah. legs that we need. I think I was fibbing when I said that the positional data, the ROV, wasn't that good. These lines are really matching up well. I thought there was more uh, variation or uncertainty in the actual position of the ROV. Ah. Okay, that, that makes sense, yeah. This is going to be absolutely awesome. <laughs> Jonathan, do you want to reshare what Simon just... Oh, look at the sea urchin on that. It almost looks like a land landmine Ooh, there. Oh, look at that. Kinda cute. It's a Pokemon. Oh, I used to know the name of that Pokemon, too. Ugh. Our, 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 our internet let us know one time. <laughs> Have you seen any sponges? Mostly coral. No, this is not a sponge garden. This is a precious coral garden. I have not seen a sponge. Well, here. Just in the room. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, did you see sponges earlier? No, I have not. No. I thought I heard earlier on the dive that someone said it, but I didn't hear if they verified as coral. No, or earlier we got into a, like a 20-minute conversation about loofahs, so let's not I open up the sponge hole. <laughs> I did hear that. I have a, I have some sea sponges in oh, my no. classroom. Oh, no. Start it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we played Jeopardy, and you know how you always have... In classrooms, you always have the, the 
the know-it-all kids that answer yeah. everything, right? I was definitely one of those. So I've, <laughs> I, I, I started this of when we play Jeopardy, I throw sea sponges at the kids. And then if they answer the question, they get the sea sponge. And you're not allowed to talk again until someone else in your group Ooh. answers, and then they get the sea sponge. So we pass the sea sponge around to make sure that the know-it-alls are not the only ones playing. Yeah, it's, it's like a silencer games. sponge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, you should do that with sea cucumbers. There, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just see toss sea I cucumbers at my students. Eating the mat, people. <laughs> my boyfriend is diving for sea cucumbers right now. Maybe I should ask him to bring some back home to Hawaii for me. <laughs> um, so a couple earlier comments I'm going to circle back around to. Um, one is saying, back to when we are talking about Australia, that... Um, they have lovely pets in Australia, and we shouldn't forget about the blue ringed octopus. I, when I oh, lived yeah, in. Oh, yes, another thing that'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not helping the argument much. <laughs> when I lived in Australia, I really, really wanted to see a blue ringed octopus. And when I was working as a guide out on the Great Barrier Reef, this lady comes in, she's like, oh my God, there's a blue ring octopus right by my son, like help, help. And I was like, oh my God, so cool. Yes, I want to, I'm going to go see this blue ring octopus. It was a clam. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was a clam with some like blue spots on it. Oh, you know, you win some, you lose some. I know. But I, I have a stuffed blue ring octopus that I got in Australia and its name is Sefi, short for cephalopod. And Sefi is with me here on the Nautilus, so. We do there's, have there's a blue our little ring. Pokemon. Yeah. Again. And then Zach, are you able to take a question? Yeah. All right. Yeah, or another piece of trash? Oh, that's yeah, we've sad. had a couple cans. It looks like. In here. Yeah. That almost looks like a yogurt cup. Well, we'll challenge ourselves to find that in the model later on and <laughs> see what it was, huh, Zach? We'll do. Um. Why are deep sea corals um, grow more upright and not flatter to the ground? So from what I know, a big part of it um, is corals are fragile, right? Um, deep sea though, you don't have a whole lot of wave energy tossing you around and bending you over basically. Like in the shallow reef, like they're, they're hard and strong because that surge would just break them off. Yeah, like if these things got pushed over, if we bump it with RB, it's, gonna, it's just gonna snap right off. Um, so in the reef, that's not really um, a very good strategy to have. <laughs> you're not going to make it long. You're not going to grow much at all. Um, so yeah, you you see there basically um, here in Hawaii, especially the shallow reefs, it's a lot of like uh, scleractinian corals. So those hard corals that, and they're essentially the reef builders. Um, so we talked about we have a couple small soft corals that like fill in the cracks here and there. Um, but in general, if you're seeing soft corals, you're in an area that's that's known for pretty calm water and. Not a whole lot of wave energy. Um, and oh, Hawaii cool. is not exactly what you think of when you think of low wave energy. Here's our little fiducial. What's our best guess on, is it a carbonate sand or crust? That these yeah, corals are on? I would I would guess that, yeah. I mean honestly it doesn't look all too different of like Yeah, like like the deep reef that, you know, you can dive even to out here in some spots. It's yeah. obviously not, you know, that basalt hard rock, but yeah, you find areas like this around. Um seems to be I don't know. Seems like things are digging in a little bit. I was talking with Larry about that a little earlier. Of, like on the reef, you have those rock boring urchins, right, that are like, chewing their way through the rocks and leaving holes and paths everywhere. And this same has has some some pukas everywhere. Those holes, things to like kind of hide in. But um, yeah, it's really interesting. So for those listening at home, puka is a Hawaiian word meaning holes. Um, it's also like your belly button is your puka and your its connection to your land, your home, through your umbilical cord. Um, we were, we did have a geologist earlier on board, uh, li or listening in the chat. So, geologists, if you want to chime in on what you think about this substrate 
here. What a beautiful. So I love that, that arch. A coral fan in the arch. Yeah, that yeah. arch is really pretty. I want to get closer, but we must maintain the discipline yeah. to complete the survey. I no, know that's we just can't. a pretty shot right there. Do it not is. get distracted by the fish. Front row, <laughs> ignore the back row. <laughs> Watch right now when we're doing this is when like some really cool thing comes along and we don't can't stop. To <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the hardest things about doing science. Sometimes is you're out doing your work and something cool comes by that you're really not allowed to stop what you're doing to go observe. No, nope, gotta keep going. I will confess, I I uh, when I was doing pilot data for a project once, I definitely made the exception for that when. Uh, some hammerhead shark swam by in the middle of the fish survey. We, <laughs> we put that one on pause, and yeah, yeah. it was pilot data. We just restarted it. Yep, um, yep, yep, I get so that. Every once in a while, there's an exception. But when we're going to these depths and investing this much time and energy to get there, um, yeah, definitely don't advise. Uh, Zach, do you want to talk about different ways you can sample, like, in-field coral biodiversity, like transect lines, quadrants, that kind of thing? Yeah, so... Um, the, the two you mentioned, kind of the, the transects or the quadrats, those are kind of the historical way we've been doing them for a long time, the traditional way. A lot of people now are actually um, implementing photogrammetry to do it because um, they're using photogrammetry. Um, there's a lot of kind of interest in complexity of the reef and the biodiversity of the reef in relation to fish um, and just kind of like tying it all together. Um, and having the photogrammetry there, you can also, you know, compare over time kind of thing and see, you know, if like a storm event comes through and wipes it out and then as it recovers, you, you just have this historical log of data versus um, just that simple transect. But the transect, um, yeah, essentially you just, you lay out a transect line. Um, a common length on a, on a reef would be like about 25 meters or so and um, five meters width and you just kind of swim along and write everything you see. Um, the quadrat is, is similar where you just set the kind of the set the quadrat the, the size of it can vary um, but you set that on that transect line and you count everything in that and then you just set it along the line and continue to count and then you can kind of um, do a calculation to figure out what the what the biomass or the density of, of those corals could be there um, but but yeah again the the photogrammetry um, has really uh, taken over especially out here in Hawaii um, I may be biased. The lab I'm in, they do it um, as well. So I know it's big there, but also just uh, a lot of organizations throughout the state are adopting that as part of their, their plans because it, it just gives you more data. More data. Like, like Jonathan was saying, you know, well, how do we hold this for 30 years? Because in 30 years, this could be huge. And we don't know what they'll use it for, but it's going to be there um, versus, you know, a piece of paper is hard to compare this to that. Um, so yeah. so digital, digital archives are um, great to have if you have a place to keep it. Um, yes. But... But yeah, not everybody has that luxury either. It's, it's. Um, well, yeah. I know I, I have a hard drive, that like a terabyte hard drive that I've stored all these photos, and yeah. I've definitely dropped a hard drive before, and then it's yeah. SOL, you know. You're so I before I came out here, I had some hard drives that I haven't really touched in a few years. I'm like, and I used them when I did my fisheries work in Alaska and had a bunch of movies on them. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I wonder if this thing still works. So I was trying <laughs> it out to see. And it did work. I was surprised. Uh, Hawaii, a lot of things seem to electronics rust up. Oh, me. yeah. You also got to keep up on the adapters anymore to make sure it plugs yeah, into they, your device. That they even <laughs> still can um, connect to each other, too. So we have another comment here, Jonathan. Norbit plus laser dive bot spectrometer plus photogrammetry models, if we can optimize these techniques and the other techniques, we might not need to sample rocks and animals from the deep sea in the future unless it's really necessary. So we can study them in a non-destructive manner and leave them alone in the habitat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the, more, the more that we can, uh, the more that we can learn without touching and uh, um, touching an animal or sampling an animal uh, the better. I, I will say one thing though is like I do think we learn a lot from DNA. Oh yeah. So there, totally. I don't think it would ever fully get rid of being 
fabled we do, we do have, to collect though. We, we've done some really pretty amazing things with eDNA. Yeah, I, I do that's agree true. With you. eDNA, I do, yeah. I do agree with you 100%. Um, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, again, museums and, and taxonomists deal with this, uh, grapple with this all the time when discovering new and novel animals. Um, in order to really classify and describe it, you do have to have the animal yeah. um, to, to really do uh, a job that, that allows you to see if other animals then are related to that species, et cetera. And we, we just know so little about the ocean right now. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult problem, but in all of our, many of our permits, we actually have built-in mechanisms that describe um, when we're allowed to sample, um, taking into cultural considerations um, and cultural practices is, is very core to us as an organization. So we try a lot, but I, I totally agree. Like uh, these technologies are, are really coming along really well and it's exciting to see where they'll go for non-destructive sampling. Um, we have a couple comments in the chat. Offside clouds and redundancy is important to data and also file formats. Yeah. Definitely. And then what is the accuracy of your photogametry, such as what will be the outcome pixel size? And are you using anything for ground control or creating a floating topography? Dude, super awesome question. I don't know the accuracy of this because we just switched out the cameras. Um, I, what were the, some of the other questions? You might be using any of the ground control. What, pixels? Oh yeah, so, and then ground control is a fantastic question. Like, like if you're doing this drone, and, and, and prior to doing any of this in the deep sea, my, my experience was using drones um, for, for doing photogrammetry. Things like ground control points, um, it, it's, a, it's a luxury that we don't have down in the deep sea. So one of the things that I'm excited about is working with a couple of other uh, uh, people that are far, more, far smarter than, than I to try to ground truth um, some of these elements. Um, and that, but that has to be based off of like the, the location of the ship and the relative location of the ROV, what's known from the bathymetry of the area, like where on the side of the mountain are you actually at? These are like non-trivial problems. And if you zoom in on Google Earth and you see an area that appears to be have a lot of definition, um, like a lot of detail in, in that map of the ocean, the bathymetry of the ocean. And to keep in mind that each one of the points that made up that map is, I, I think that the resolution is like 100 meters between them. So like, that that's a lot. Yeah. There's very little that's known. It's very hard to be precise uh, under the water. So um, anyway, non-trivial but fun problem to, yeah. to look at. Oh, and a viewer said that if we come across a beaked whale, that they vote for an ROV and camera malfunction, and then we go <laughs> check out the beaked whale. And I have to say, I agree with that. We will. I w uh, we will stop a survey for a, a, a whale. <laughs> I think. I think that's okay. Everyone agreed. I think we can make that happen. Yeah, just just that happen. Just just the one. So let's ask Kanaloa to make that happen for us. Yeah. Kanaloa is the Hawaiian ocean god. It really is kind of falling off the hard substrate, and as soon as you yeah. do, there's... Yeah, and then our coral. Yep. Corals right, are dropping off. This should off be a very it. interesting model. Mm -hmm. And so the, the nominal way that um, and in a future dive, we're going to be going, I think, to McCall Seamounts um, tomorrow, I believe is the plan. Um, and one of the things we're going to try to do there is, um, I believe the dive is that we will be going from the bottom of the seamount to the top. Um, and a goal for this project, again, with the, with the proper wide field camera array back up and running, um, is to create a single unified model um, from the bottom of the seamount to the top. I'm forgetting exactly how long that is. You guys remember from the? It's uh, over 4,000 meters. Yeah. Well, over we can only go to 4,000 with Herc. Four, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So we're not gonna go to the bottom. We're gonna go as, we can go down to four. Yeah, so a, a, a model that, that could span approximately three kilometers up the side of the model, or uh, up the side of the seamount. That's gonna be the goal for, for that expedition. So um, I'd like to, 
the, uh, myself and, and, and Chris Krasnowski, the, our navigator on board and, and, and the architect behind the Norbit um, uh, multi-beam sonar that's, that's also on Little Herc. We've been conniving some cool <laughs> plans to be able to do some, some true sensor fusion where um, the photogrammetry will be this tiny little element of very high resolution data. Little bright line up the side of a seamount Norbit is going to likely provide a larger swath, uh, so a larger viewpoint of, of maybe 100 meters off to either side of the ROV. I'm speaking about science I don't really understand, to be really <laughs> frank, but you know, Chris, Chris, will, Chris will chime in tomorrow and, and give the better details if you're following along. And then we'll also have higher or um, other resolution of multi-beam data from a previous survey from the uh, unmanned surface vehicle Drix, um, which was operated by um, uh, Dr. Lair Mayer um, with the uh, Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping. Uh, he's on board right now. They just got done with our technology cruise, NA-155, um, and they actually just mapped this same seamount with Drix, okay. um, which I believe has a, a sonar that is, is um, uh, more finely calibrated for that kind of mid, um, middle deep resolution um, and then finally we also multi-beam surveyed that same area so so four different resolutions of data that we can lay on each other to demonstrate the power and the application the potential application of each technology and what do you do if some of those models don't agree with each other Oh, that's a, a great swap. question you get excited because <laughs> it means that something's wrong and uh, <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't mean not necessarily mean that. It just means that you know each of these have navigational solutions. So they may just be that the nav systems are just slightly out of alignment because there's no yeah. GPS. Yeah. Once you hit the water. Yeah. Uh, and we, not we and reject your reality and substitute our own. <laughs> <laughs> In the words of the Mythbusters. What is, oh, another hermit crab crawling over on that uh, right Don't hand move side. so much, hermit crab. You'll ruin my model. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to see a streaking, a fast streaking, hermit, hermit crab. Streaking hermit crab. What's, uh, there's this, uh, oh, no, I'm thinking uh, the snail, Turbo the snail. So it's Turbo oh. the hermit crab. Oh, Turbo the hermit crab, yeah. Um, theoretically, you might be able to print out the model on a 3D printer and use it for onshore experiments in a more controlled environment. Hey, right now, you if saying. you want to 3D print the columnar basalt we saw two, three days ago, you can do it. Go under Sketchfab. We made the model public within 12 hours of coming back after the dive. It is That's the pretty dream. That's awesome. That it's pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. I think I'd like a 3D model of those come. I can't say it. I'm going to say basalt columns. But, yeah. <laughs> basalt <laughs> columns. I columnar. Just, I just, columnar. I don't know. I get all tongue-tied for that. Yeah. Columnar. Columnar. Columnar basalt. I like basalt columns. That's yeah. What yeah, no, no. We, get, um, we got that. Classroom. We we did a landscape um, that included uh, a couple of different coral species. Um, and we're working to process some of the not dikes. I forgot what Larry called them. Sills. 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 Yeah. Or ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, the ice cream sandwiches that we saw a couple of days ago. That's typical Nautilus. Is we, we instantly just go straight to a food analogy. <laughs> Jonathan, we have a comment. That leave it to a scientist to be happy when something goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fat. It's not wrong, as, as Dan said. It, but it, it reveals that there's something to be improved. Yeah. And that, that's pretty that's Actually, that's a great lesson in life. I feel like more people need to know. And I try to tell students all the time that if something doesn't go as planned. If we have the time, yeah. Let's just let's just do it. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're wrong or you failed. It just means you have to look at it another way. Yeah, that's correct. And that's what sometimes is the excitement about it. Yeah. It and again, it also gives you your next project right yeah, away. Totally. <laughs> you don't have to think hard for the next project. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone out there wants to get their, you know, masters or PhD and some of these questions, if we come up with a, you know, error difference between photogrammetry and Norbit and also, if anyone EK80. out there has a 3D printer and wants to print out the <laughs> basalt columns and mail them to Radford High School, <laughs> I'd be happy to take uh, that donation because I do not have a 3D printer. He's on me. <laughs> do you guys have an Oculus yet? Like a headset? Uh, no. 
Oh, yeah. Well, this is going to be something else that we're <laughs> going to be able to put out on some of these. Uh, on Sketchfab, actually, right now, you can view that model in full 3D. It's quite awesome if you happen to have a uh, headset at home, a VR headset. And then the other thing that I'm working on right now with the team down in the data lab is to start producing our first little immersive video based off of these two uh, stereo cameras that are that are on the front porch of Hercules. I just finally got a really nice Promethean board. Before that, I was just using a projector, my whiteboard. So oh. I have this Promethean board. It's What's I a Promethean board? It's a it's, it's kind of like a smart board. So you use it, and you can. It's like a touch screen. Think of it as like a giant TV wow. touch screen. And um, you can have like there's a program that you can use like a pen and write on and things like that. That's kind of cool. I, I, I no I more chalkboards, huh? Oh, I still use my whiteboard. I don't. I I'm I'm not very good with the touch screens because I like. When I'm talking, I touch it too much, and then I oh. mess it up. So <laughs> I take the touch screen off, and I use it, and then I go right on my whiteboard. But I have that Promethean board, but it's kind of nice of I project, like, those underwater dives on Google Maps, right, and turn off the lights, and the kids can go up to it and zoom in and things like that. So that's kind of cool. But yeah. I'd love to get some VR headsets, but I don't think the Hawaii's oh, public yeah, school yeah, funding yeah. is quite there yet yeah, we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to speak to the facebooks of the world yes <laughs> again send any donations to radford high school <laughs> and honolulu hawaii honolulu hawaii put daniela graffay in care of <laughs> <laughs> and you were working on a edna project weren't you yes i did actually so that was through funding through Ilani is a private school in Hawaii and they have a fantastic public outreach and so they have the Aina informatics team and so through that Ilani got funding from um, the Hawaii Dental Association and Dental Association. yeah because they're trying to increase STEM and science outreach in schools and so through that program and me doing that fellowship I got PCR equipment and um, gel electrophoresis and they have a mobile genome so I've been actually wow. combining that fellowship with this fellowship here coming out on Nautilus and Nautilus has put me in contact with a coral deep sea ecologist Meredith Ooh. and she has sent us coral samples and Ooh. so wow. in my class we will be sequencing some deep sea corals that's excellent i know i'm that's really, really excited good. i think for that's uh, way cooler than a than a yeah. smart board yeah <laughs> <laughs> that i i, I, I mean you're you're doing dna sequencing in your high school yeah. that's pretty good so well, what yeah. a special experience though for your kids well i Tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> because They're you're very like lucky to have that <laughs> set up. <laughs> I hope some of you are listening. I had one on the other night, but yeah, It'll they get just, to I feel like roll their eyes at me mostly. <laughs> um, what is the name of the feature you scan into Sketchfab? Uh, so that was during dive H2012. Um, and that was a columnar basalt f uh, formation that we filmed across two different dives. Um, I'm forgetting the exact file name. I got you. It. I'll look it up. There you go. Um, so we actually scanned and published two of those items. Um, and then the other thing that we've gotten working in the past couple of days is um, we're starting to georeference those bottles and have scripted it so that it can happen automatically now. Um, Geo-referencing is uh, um, assigning coordinate values to uh, any piece of data that associates it with its time um, and altitude, or I'm sorry, its location and altitude on Earth. So by geo-referencing these models, um, I've started uploading them to an uh, online geospatial modeling platform called uh, Cesium Ion, a really awesome, powerful tool. Um, for delivering geo-referenced models, and you can also view some of these models coming up. And by, by the right place in space, um, I mean that for this model that we'll generate, we'll actually, if you're zooming in on Earth, this will appear in the correct spot on this seamount, um, on the side of the seamount at the correct depth. Uh, so it's, it, it's quite remarkable, or it's, it's uh, quite an awesome technology to start moving forward with. 
Um, and then someone is asking, is this the beginning of the halo deck? Next step is making photogrammetry tactile. Now you're talking. The future is now. Just <laughs> just throw on an Oculus 3 right now or anything with really good AR pass-through, and uh, it is absolutely a holodeck. It's almost tactile. We 3D scanned a goosefish three days ago that you can zoom up to be as large as you and you realize just how intimidating that pout face is, man. I kind of wanted like a 3D print of that goosefish. It was too. the highest resolution <laughs> goosefish because we just stood there and we just, we kept taking photos of it because <laughs> everyone was zooming in on the goosefish. So I, I just I like, like how like we spent photos. so much time on this, the first goosefish and now we're, we've been seeing them every single dive and we're like, yeah. So apparently Big Island is a hot spot for goosefish. Well, it, it shows, someone asked about resolution and models and is a great example of the fact that you can have very detailed resolution models because you really can. You could zoom in that goosefish wearing a headset <laughs> and that goosefish is as large as you and you could see every pore on that beautiful <laughs> goosefish's face. So I and definitely big don't old want frown. one of my own face because that just sounds <laughs> terrifying. Um, but super, super intuitive and awesome way to explore data in these VR headsets or, or, or any uh, collaborative environment like that. Uh, someone says they want that goosefish model for their TTRPG. What's Tabletop T RPG. You are absolutely right. What a fantastic monster that would make. <laughs> um, Although, I mean, the goosefish is not inherently bad. We do not know its true intentions. <laughs> it, though it frowns, what if that's just the face it was given? You know? You know, some people do just have that resting angry face. Yeah. So. Yeah. Going back to the uh, file name, uh, it's not the most uh, easy file name. It's a bunch of numbers still. <laughs> yeah. We should probably All right, edit so that name. So, listener, if you're wanting that file name, pay close it's, attention here. It's uh, the H2012, and then underscore you'll have 221542 underscore 221442. We'll get that. Get so that name changed. Zach, <laughs> we, we were discussing data integrity earlier and the challenge of these models. What what do those numbers mean and why why did we choose them? Why did you choose them? So those are the timestamps of the photos. Um, and yeah, from this from the last three days, we have tens of thousands of photos to sort through right now. Um, so basically, there's a team of us down in the lab and we all kind of take chunks out of each day and we see what models we can build out of that day. So essentially that is the, uh, the start and the end time of those photos that made that model up. Um, so yeah, there's, well, we can change that. But yeah, that's really what it is. So it's kind of unique. You get to see how long it took to take pictures of that. So basically, let's see, about a minute is all, all we do. We just kind of scan along for a minute and got that pass. But again, we were getting pictures from three cameras during that. So it, that speeds it up like uh, Jonathan was talking about. If we had one camera, we'd have to go much slower to get the same resolution. Yep. Um, and so that's it's one of those things where, yeah, you there's, there's perks to each. But in the end, the way you can get pictures the most and process the fastest is really um, kind of the goal of what, of what we're doing. And yeah, those three pictures made, made this happen. Or yeah. th three cameras made this happen so so quickly, short of time span, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a couple. We, I think we got another model up there, too, from the trip already. We Zach, do you want to repeat that number just one more time? Yes, it is H2012 underscore 22-15-42 underscore 22-14-42. All right, and someone also said cheat mode. Just follow the EV Nautilus creator on Sketchfab. There you go. HTTPS um, colon backslash backslash sketchfab.com backslash EV Nautilus. Woo! We do have some really awesome, we have a 3D printable uh, model of the exploration vessel Nautilus available there. It's an awesome 3D print. We have a Hercules and we have yeah. an Atalanta all available to print. And um, this is past year with uh, support from uh, the Sitco Foundation. Um, we actually were also able to start scanning a whole bunch of commonly used uh, uh, ROV instruments like manipulators and a couple of corals on deck all uh, that you can 3D print at home. And, and uh, we're going to be going great guns with our Sketchfab account in addition to a couple of the other uh, online hosting platforms here in this coming year. And a user asked earlier if I'm on Donors Choose. And I am actually on Donors Choose, but I don't have any open projects. 
So. Oh, cool. Is that a... Uh... Donors Choose is um, an organization. It's a website you can go to. Teachers can set up an account and you can create projects where people can go onto the website, search through. You can either buy at your area, you can pick specific schools, specific teachers, or you can just look through any projects and it's to provide um, classroom funding. Could we ask them just right at the end to actually do a four corner? That would be, oh, they're running out of time, okay. Just have to trim the edges. Yeah, just to trim the edges, man, you know the way it is. It's like truly mowing a lawn, you know, you miss <laughs> all those on your terms. I actually like to make a spiral when I'm on my lawn. The patterns. <laughs> but yes, for any of you looking to donate to schools, check out Donor Choose, support your local school, give back to those teachers. Cause awesome. getting supplies is definitely a hard thing. Oh, that's a shame. Should not have to be that way. Yeah, yeah, teachers carry the burden, yeah, purchasing supplies for their classroom. Yeah. yeah. So a lot it it varies for every school. I actually try to reach out and apply to a lot of grants and oh, um, nice. fundings and stuff yeah. like that to get supplies for my classroom. But it's a lot of work. Yeah. You have to um, so I definitely always spend a few hundred dollars on yeah. supplies in my classroom as well. Oh, yeah, let's not forget that. That's important. Yeah, let's prioritize that. Go ahead. Sometimes also just on weird things. I spent $50 on Skittles. So I mean, that's very important. <laughs> morale. We were, we were doing I, was a lab <laughs> called Survival the Sweetest. So each Skittle represented, a, uh, each color represented a different species on an intertidal zone. And so we played a game, they'd roll dice and they had a, um, a starfish and a carnivorous snail. And so they'd eat different colors. And so you kind of use the Skittles on this map and whatnot. Yeah. And then as the animals die, you get to eat your Skittles, right? So it kind of makes it fun. But yeah, Skittles are getting way more expensive. And it's really yeah. hard to find a ginormous bag of Skittles. So it, Didn't they I, change the flavors of them too a couple years ago or yeah. something? They're, They're in a new color or something. But fun fact, Amazon five pound bag of Skittles costs just under 50 bucks. Good to know. <laughs> I will write that one yeah. down. And someone in the chat said to um, donate to underfunded rural schools, and I highly agree with that statement. Yes, sir. And then, uh, as as uh, Dan said, well, just to make sure that we recover the uh, uh, fiducial. The line between the two verticals doesn't have to be straight, so you can kind of do a drive-by and pick that up if it would be helpful. Roger. So we have a question on the chat. Several passes ago, we placed the block on the ground with Herc. Will you be collecting that or does it serve another purpose? And I believe we are planning on picking that block up. Yes. Yep, we're heading back there now. Yes. That's just for scale and then image.
So yeah, I don't think we have a, a comment in the chat saying asking if they deliver to EV Nautilus. And no, I don't think a uh, Amazon delivers to EV Nautilus all the way out here, but that would be pretty sweet, I have to say. Um, and someone said, if I get tired of Skittles, to consider belly flops. I have had, I've actually gone to the Jelly Belly factory and had belly flops before. But yeah, that would be a good alternative. I just actually prefer Skittles over Jelly Bellies. And I mean, I have to steal some of the Skittles too, not just my students. Um, but I think they're both good. They're both good. Yeah. My grandpa loves Jelly Bellies. That's always been his favorite. Um, South Big Island is known for collecting trash. Surprise, more trash was not found on your dives. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're quite a ways away from south right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a beach down there. Yeah. We're more off of um, the Kona side. We're actually, I was looking at it earlier, at the beaches. We're kind of off of um, Kiahe. Kehole. Kehole yep. um, State Beach Park. Yep. So that's where we're kind of over on that point. Yeah, and a lot of that trash kind of floats at the surface, and it's the currents that takes it in there to uh, Camilo Beach. Um, it's kind of actually like a, a lot of people on the island participating, going down there, cleaning up, removing the trash every so months. It's quite a trek, though. It's a, it's a four-wheel drive to get there just to help. So uh, some, some organizations out here usually set up kind of cleanup days, which is nice. But, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a lot of uh, fishing gear floats up ashore down there, and um, it's from all over. You can find trash from all over the Pacific. comes in there. Um, we ran into some of that fishing gear yesterday. We, we did. <laughs> yep. All right, Jonathan, what's the current status for us here? Our pilots did a fantastic job. I wish you could see just how straight these transect yeah. lines are. Tr very impressive. Yes. Um, and we're just kind of wrapping up the edges, cleaning them up, and we're going to collect the uh, piece of um, metal that we set down as our, our reference point. Uh, and then I think we're going to go back up to the surface and end this dive. That'll be fun to watch the ROV Hercules pick up that that device. I Boop. think will be cute. If he can cut a rope, he can he can pick up a metal bar. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's so. He can do this one with his eyes closed. Although looking back at those photos, I can, it almost it's kind of like it's a little sinister looking. They're like are, are Hercules holding this knife, looking at Atlanta. Like it, I, maybe it's yeah. just cut Halloween. It kind yeah. of feels like. Uh, He's no, looking be, over to. That'll, that'll definitely be our. Uh, are we jealous meal. of each other or something? You know. <laughs> Atalanta's jealous that Hercules always gets all the attention. <laughs> we got a little are eel there. Are they done there. with the map? Are still doing the edge? Jonathan, are they, are they still doing the edge? Uh, yeah, I believe right. they. if they have time, they'll do the other edge, but okay. otherwise uh, recover the element and, and move on. Okay. And Jonathan, do you and know Simon, what you can you can make whatever speed as fast as you would like over there that it's not super critical for the speed anymore. <laughs> uh, I like this comment here and I think we we need to just do something to make this happen. I need a social media post of Herc carving a pumpkin. Ooh. That would sound like it'd be a lot of fun. I think we, we need uh, a missed our chance to get a pumpkin on the boat today. Oh, yeah, we did. We totally did. We don't have a pumpkin. Hey, uh, Ignacio, if you're listening, we're not that far from shore. If you swim want to swim out. a pumpkin. <laughs> uh, swim a pumpkin on over. That's get on the like surfboard. We, yeah. need, we need that Amazon delivery off the, <laughs> off the shore here. There we uh, go. I think, unfortunately, uh, Hercules has some other tasks he's got to take care of before he's carving <laughs> a pumpkin. Yeah, right one now. or two, right? Yeah. Hercules is a busy man. We do have some styrofoam pumpkins that Hercules will be taking down for us. Oh, I still need to make my cup. Yeah, so we, we have do. some styrofoam pumpkins and styrofoam cups that we're going to take down on a later dive. 
Um, uh, to down to Hercules' max depth, 4,000 meters. Yeah, and see the compression on those. 4,000 meters, the equivalent pressure is 2.24 elephants <laughs> standing on a penny. <laughs> I know that because I asked ChatGPT last night. Oh, did you? Can you ask ChatGPT that um, I always, when I was diving, right, they told me that every bar you go down in pressure, it's like drinking a martini. So they called it the martini rule because you get um, nitrogen narcosis. Oh. So the deeper you go, the drunker you feel because of the nitrogen narcosis. So how many martinis is that? Ooh, I don't know. We're going to have to ask that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if you want if anyone's listening right now, please type that into chat. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking African or Indian elephants? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I should have asked. Oh, that, is, that is quite a big difference, oh, too. That will be the uh, question of the night in the data lab. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh, my gosh. See, this is the thing. You, you can ask ChatGPT, and it will always give you an answer. But is it the answer you were looking for? Yeah. So I think what it, they're actually doing in the data lab, instead of making these models, is using AI to make, like, Jonathan a mermaid or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. We are, we are teaching AI how to. Yeah. How to. How do you make the mermaid? Look um, at this cool little ridge line. I like this. Yeah. Another can there. That coral is just beautiful. Oh, you got winch, a little fish right down winch there, Winch control. Too. Yeah, there's been quite a bit of fish. Like, if you yeah. look around the base of each coral, there's just, like, one little fish hanging underneath. One little, two little, three little fishies. <laughs> so this coral has this kind of black spot on it. What do you think yeah. that is? Is that a hole? where a starfish came in. Oh. Yeah, oh, quite ate a, some it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, some pretty. Poor little so, guy. I don't know who to root for. Do I root? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. a fascinating man. If we had time, I would totally want to go. Yeah. That was that's really this, fascinating yeah. structure out there. Because yeah. it looks like there's some coral growing under yeah, that. Yeah, under that. it. Yeah. There's always one thing left to explore, the literal end of our tether tonight. A mystery in the deep. Alrighty. Uh, the mystery of the deep. <laughs> I think we have Speaker. another chat GPT question saying, what airspeed velocity of a swallow in flight? African, African or European? <laughs> 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 oh. I can't get that image of her carving a pumpkin out of my head, though. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let's go for it. Happy Halloween. Happy the Halloween. Um, <laughs> I used to be in a dive club, and they do a underwater carving contest. And so I think, you know, ROV pilot pumpkin underwater pumpkin carving contest would be pretty cool. It would be pretty sweet. <laughs> Yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I didn't catch that. Can you repeat that on SPL for me, please? Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen divers and uh, ROVs uh, uh, playing X and O's. Oh, <laughs> tic tac toe <laughs> with a ROV. Yep. On a pipeline. Mm. Oh, so sounds like future expedition possible plans we can put into act here. Yeah, it's part of a big chessboard. Big chessboard. Chess yeah. <laughs> I did a I did a course on a robotic arm a few years ago, and part of the test at the end of it was you had to take a, a bottle of coke and pour out a, a glass of coke using the robotic arm, mm. uh, yeah, and write to write part of your name <laughs> with a marker. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen on Instagram? They have there's. I saw all these challenges of like how steady your hand is and based on your job. I feel like you guys, ROV pilots, would have very steady hands. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I, really, I have the least steady hands, I think, on the whole ship. <laughs> That's okay. Our ROV is big. It compensates. Exactly. A little bit. A little, little wobble back and forth. Got some bumpers there. <laughs> 
I had a question earlier in the chat that I'm going to pester you guys with of how much um, overlay do you think there is between ROV pilots and drone pilots? Um, I own a drone, so yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> few ROV pilots have them as, as hobbies in their spare time. It's, uh, I've, I've flown drone for about a decade commercially and I have to say I would not have the patience to be an ROV pilot. <laughs> yeah. Patience is a big, yeah. Patience is big, and and the and the and the ROV itself is big, right? If I, if I biff yeah. a drone, it's. You also don't have a tether on your drone. Yeah, hey, you have yeah. a tether on drone. <laughs> a lot less to worry about. Of, yeah, a lot less trees down here to worry about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So here's a comment in the chat saying that they tried to explain the rope cutting Thank to a neighbor using their hands, a ship, and two ROVs bouncing around and then pull out a knife to cut the rope and said that the neighbor didn't say it, but she thinks they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair. <laughs> I'll see it to believe it. Yeah. Well, you can hardest. also show the footage when that gets released. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll release that sometime during the winter. I think I'm going to title the video, Why Does Hercules Have a Knife? <laughs> 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 you got to get that clicky, cl clickbaity question. Look, what did Hercules find? <laughs> or, or just like when, Herc, or when the AI of Herc takes over. Yeah. We've abandoned our effort to <laughs> do any sort of meaningful. <laughs> well, Jonathan, your survey is complete. I'm very happy. Just Service gotta recover complete. your marker. Gotta and get one marker done. and then we're out. Beautiful right. work. So Jonathan, do you know what our dive plan is for tomorrow? I believe that we're gonna be going to McCall Seamount, um, which is a distance away from here. I believe I heard it was a eight or nine hour uh, steam. And this will be the site, again, we're going to be focusing on photogrammetry for the first dive. And we're going to be ground truthing um, some of the initial multi-beam survey work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, look at the look fish in there. Fish. There's two oh. fishies in the outcrop. Ooh, we'll Three be able fish. to model those. We can model yeah. those. That's going to be great. <laughs> They look like they're in their little house together. Oh, hello, guys. At least we got a better look at the end. Yeah, that's true. I'll bet you that'll oh, actually wow. do a really cool little marker, little model right at the end. Yeah. We'll go model that. Yeah. Going back to the, the arms and the knives, one of the things that's, is the un, the, one of the difficult things is we have no depth perception. Mm. So size of objects is uh, often hard to calculate when, when we're uh, trying to cut things or grab things. You know, you'll see us often just miss the target or just uh, grab, like we're grabbing into space. So, because we only generally look at one camera or two cameras, we're not getting the full 3D image of what we're, uh, what we're trying to grab. So, you know, you know sometimes it makes us I look can bad, but we don't. Sometimes when we go to things, we don't know how big they are. In, in I reality. can relate to how Herc must feel with no depth perception. I swear, I have no depth perception. As <laughs> that's why I never was very good at ball sports. I just always kept hit, getting hit in the face with them. Well, it's a it's a super exciting application of uh, the stereo cameras that we have on front of Hercules right now. And and to be clear, the stereo system that we're uh, we have on front isn't super ideal for doing proper 3D piloting but it's absolutely something that's been tried and, and something that's been uh, ready to be commercialized for situational awareness of ROV pilots in this environment. Um, a close collaborator, uh, Casey Sapp, with uh, Blue Ring Imaging, uh, I think they're now like Video Ray. Um, that's what he's really dedicated uh, his career towards building, which is it's really awesome. They're machine vision based. Um, so uh, not as high of a quality of camera, of course, but by, from this, but um, it's purpose-built for being placed on an ROV behind the manipulators um, so that an operator can wear a headset and have truly good depth perception um, for piloting. Um, really awesome to... Um, and I've, I've seen the demo of this, but uh, they have a product called OctaView 
that is kind of the minority report style way of visualizing data from the ROVs while you're in, in the 3D headset. Wow. And so viewers, if you're watching, I highly recommend to watch this on the quad view so that you can get the view of Atlanta Ooh, can you mark looking. That as a highlight? I got you. That's really cool. Do you want me to from Atlanta or Both Ar of them. Hurricane yeah, Argus? Yeah, that's cool. Retrieval of known oh, object marker. Um, Very cool. Oh, I don't know what number I put it on. I put it on five. Yeah, the depth perception reminds me a lot of the uh, claw game in the arcade. Can oh, yeah, 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 That's yeah, like yeah. just in that is even hard, and then the here bah. it's trying to get something that's real instead of just a toy. The claw. <laughs> the claw. The claw uh, has chosen me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this wing time. Our um, chat is saying that shadows can also really mess with depth perception. This is very true. So yeah, what I was saying is, um, Watch on the quad so you can, it's a really cool view right now that Atalanta is showing of us, showing Herc um, and about to retrieve that object. And then on the other camera on our satellite feed one, you can see Herc's view looking at that object. And here comes Herc's arm. And the little color spots there, the white balance. Very nice. Can lead a horse to water here. <laughs> That should help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Demonstrating depth perception. Oh, what a pro. Oh, oh, right between. Oh, it's pretty hard rock, huh? It is pretty hard, isn't it? It doesn't look like it'd be as hard. No. You'd think it almost looks like ROV. ROV, er, Herc's fingers would just dig right into it. Who made these sli sides so slippery? That's cool. Look at that. Oh, oh. no. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> better. He just wanted a reaction. Yeah. <laughs> now he's going to do it. Dave, that is like one of the coolest Atlanta views we've had in a while. Yeah. That's all TJ right there. Good job, TJ. Yeah, beautiful. We're to hand that off to the other arm there, aren't we? In order to. Oh, yeah, sorry. We took all your sampling boxes, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I love the view on um, Hercules with the corals right behind this passing yeah, the between the arms is really nice. It's 
Simon's carefully negotiating two very different control systems right now. Now he's going to put back the arm. Look at how pretty that. It's a bouquet, a bouquet <laughs> of precious corals. So in the chat, they said that um, it needs a monkey ball or grabber handle. And the reason we didn't put one on there is because we wanted this shape to be a, a known size and shape. So we had that rectangle specifically for our mapping. Yeah, yeah. So we couldn't really put a monkey ball or a grabber handle to make it easier for the ROV due to the purpose of the block in the first place. Yeah, and our ROV doesn't necessarily like it to be easy. They have to show <laughs> off that it's a challenge yeah. and that they can overcome. <laughs> Otherwise, our ROV pilots would get bored. We need uh, to keep yeah, them no. entertained. It's true. Keep them on their toes. I'm sure that's exactly what Simon was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they just put a handle on this? <laughs> Very scientific taping job there. I, I like the red, white, and blue. Uh, you know, just representing. Don't let Canada get too much credit here. <laughs> Just uh, an wrist up the touch. I'm gonna porch it out the touch. And okay. Yep, I think we're happy. All right, so for those of you watching at home, we've retrieved our item. We finished our mapping of this area. So we're going to start our ascent here pretty soon. So if you have any questions, um, this is the time to put them in the chat. And um, otherwise, once we get to 50 meters, we're going to sign on out. So let us know. And keep your eyes out on that open blue. We've been having pretty good luck of... Um, Seeing squid and being inked, yeah. so who knows? Maybe we'll be inked again. Keep our trend going. Well, I say we had another good dive today. We did. I have mean, another good dive we landed today. right in the middle of this awesome formation where we had lava flow and calcium carbonate, and it was a absolutely stunning. And I think we did a good photogrammetry uh, run on that wall, and uh, then we went started up the you know up the slope. Uh, hoping to find, and there was a couple of nice outcroppings where we found some coral. Nothing like this, but some coral. We saw a skate. That was pretty awesome. Yes. Um, or or a stingray. I don't know. You know, I'm not a biologist. Stingray. Stingray. Sorry, a stingray. 
and um, essentially now went pen to the top here, and we found this awesome coral garden, and essentially did a photogrammetry grid survey of it. That's all complete. And we now saw some awesome ROV driving, some nice straight lines in our grid. Yeah. Do you like a straight line in a grid? So another good day. Another good day. Let's see. Right, Our seven. current depth is 374 meters, and I like looking at the temperature and seeing the temperature change. We're at 9.66 degrees Celsius currently. So I'm we'll excited to see if uh, we managed to download the rest of the files off the cameras over this last hour. That'll be close. I hope so. Yeah. That'll make our lives a lot easier so we don't have to open the bottles. Mm, now we get to go back and model. <laughs> Not even, yeah. That's what we do. Right after the dive, you got to go right into it. Yep. A viewer is saying thank you for answering all their questions and for all of us to keep up our great work. It's been our pleasure here on Nautilus. We appreciate everyone joining along. Please tell your friends and families. Go visit our website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> visit our website at nautiluslive.org. <laughs> where we aim to inspire the joy of exploration. <laughs> and you can also check out our Instagram, Nautilus Live. I don't even have an Instagram. <laughs> I, I really need to get on top of that. We, we have TikTok, and I actually, I've been very adamant against TikTok. And you guys ruined that. Well, here's one thing. So I am our media producer, and I my fiefdom is our little YouTube page. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. I can't actually take any credit for any of the actual successes because, as always, it is a team effort. There were other people before me that brought it to its current glory of having over half a million subscribers on our YouTube. I'm very, very happy that so many people want to follow along. We really owe quite a bit of it to the googly-eyed stubby squid and Taylor Swift, which I'm <laughs> very, again, very proud of. But um, we hired, uh, or not but, but and, uh, we hired a, a, a new social media um, Jamie. manager. Yeah, manager Jamie. And the first thing she did, being savvy and probably, you know, more hip with the times than <laughs> me as an old fogey official dad now, <laughs> Except we're going on TikTok. I'll tell you what, she reposted that googly eye stubby squid and suddenly <laughs> we're up like 400,000 TikTok <laughs> users in like one year. I mean, it's taken us like 10 years to get to, to where we're at on our YouTube and I'm feeling threatened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling threatened right now, all right? She well, has a power. She has a power. <laughs> yeah. Well, this I... This day, yeah, you know, she texted me and said, hey, you know what? Madison, Madison who is our, our communications lead out here, she's like, can fill me for TikTok, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> you know, I am not your, I am not your dancing monkey. You, but you kinda, then, you but then I, I, I absolutely <laughs> did film the TikTok because I know, you know, this is that's the power. Of TikTok. I can't, I can't be in the way of progress. Well, I downloaded TikTok finally just so because Jamie posted a video of me, and I had asked my friends who have TikTok. I'm like, hey, follow. Me not a slide for me so if there's a video of me you can tell me about it and they they all failed me <laughs> <laughs> so i realized i cannot depend on my friends and i just downloaded tiktok myself well dan we're gonna have to get you on tiktok here soon yeah i don't have any tiktok <laughs> absolutely someone one time told me that like TikTok. are you allowed to use tiktok <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> what about instagram don't have instagram either uh, facebook yeah. nope no, no, uh, just no social media. No, so you're a ghost. Are I you know. actually even here? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to see you. <laughs> I was going to say not according to your boss, but he's just here. <laughs> uh. Um. Oh, this should make you happy, Jonathan. They're saying that they'd love if we got better notification for new dives on YouTube. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're trying really hard with that. <laughs> um, one of the ways that we can do it is actually start and stop a live stream. But it is it is actually a really difficult thing. We're also going to start next year to do a better job of using YouTube's new posting functionality. Um, so if you are subscribed to receive the alerts 
I think that means that you'll actually get um, uh, dive alerts uh, directly through your YouTube app. And it's super fascinating because, um, you know, we, we care a lot about what we call our target audience and, and anyone in social media or, or actually any, any company, anything. Um, you know, you care about who do you, who do you think you're reaching versus who are you reaching. And one of those elements is how people are using YouTube. And, and, and over 73% of people um, are watching this feed right now on the YouTube app on their phone instead of through the nautiluslive.org web portal or oh, on YouTube yeah. itself. And uh, that really does fundamentally change how we produce for our audiences um, because our goal is to reach as many new people around the world as we, as we can. So yeah, great, great messages like that are always well received. We always read every single new comment on a uh, post or a video that, that comes out. We really love all the feedback. Um, and we really love sharing all of the stories um, that we can from, from these incredible expeditions um, throughout the year. And we have someone saying that they're watching us live from their balcony in Kona. So when can our, see our ship. Yeah, I can see our ship from Kona. Ooh. So when the ship is done, I'll, I'll go out on the bow and I'll give you a wave. All right. <laughs> it is nearly a full moon too tonight. Yeah. So. yeah. Pretty close. And then we also had a comment that the fish with the spikes on the top looked great. I'm blinking already. What was the name of that fish again? Oh. It's the spiny topped orange fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to look back. Spiny fishy day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one time um, my sister had some friends that joined us in Hawaii, came for a visit, and we were doing a hike. Canna Point, and it's a beautiful out on the west point of Oahu, but there's a blowhole there. And so I stopped and I was just watching and I let it surprise them. And they're like, Whoa! And then I was like, Yeah, it's a rare species of wave kales or, or what cave whales. So that's Ooh. the blow of a whale. And I was like, Yeah, and I made up a scientific name for it and a whole diet and all this stuff, and they totally believed it. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, no, Whoa. That's, that's the best thing about being a dad. <laughs> <laughs> fundamentally changed my child's perspective on the world. Yeah. And I love you if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, oh, you're a marine biologist. How did I know? And I was like, so just viewers, I would never lie to you ever. Or the would I? <laughs> <laughs> Let me look up the common name for him. Oh, there we go. I don't think I could. Oh, coffin fish. Oh no, that was oh yeah, that was the the goosefish looking one. Oh, that was the goosefish yeah, looking one. Yeah, the spiky one, yeah. one is the Hawaiian spikefish. Hawaiian spikefish. I, I think oh, I can remember did, that. I, I don't. I, did we call that earlier? I, I, I feel like yeah. I should remember that name. Oh, I said I the know. scientific name earlier. Oh, you said the scientific. The, the Hawaii okay. goslinia. So uh, is it only found in Hawaii then? If it's called uh, the Hawaiian I don't spikefish? think so. I would guess that um. A lot of deep sea fish are, are pretty well distributed because they're, they're so slow growing and everything, right? And their larval stages are pretty long. Um, and their larval stage is usually what dictates how far fish spread, yeah? So that's yeah. why like, Hawaii has so many... Um, yeah, so many endemic, especially like small surgeon fish and things like that. Um, or not surgeon fish, sorry, but like such endemic fish that have short larval stages. The longer larval stages, they drift farther, disperse more. Those short larval stages, they, they go and they come back, so... Um, the dis, uh, here's a comment saying the discord server live stream oceanographic has dive alerts for Nautilus and all other streaming ships. I've never really got into discord. I don't even know what, oh, what discord. it really is. I know discord. my sister talks about it in her like med school or she's in medical school, but her application for residencies and all, I don't know. She's on some discord live stream oceanographic. Yeah. Watch I think out. I Jonathan's going to look yeah. it up now. So what exactly is Discord? Is it just like a ch online chat thing? Yeah, it's like a chat platform, basically. Another viewer is watching from their smart TV via the YouTube app, and they're yeah. forcing their family to join. <laughs> I like that. Force that family. Hello, anonymous viewer <laughs> and all of your family. Yeah, we, we might. Welcome we to might. the deep ocean. More the merrier. Yeah. More the merrier. I 
Uh, it's not exactly the most scintillating moment to <laughs> ask your family to. <laughs> Hopefully, walk they've in. been watching the whole dive and not Observe just. Observe the water of the blue. <laughs> we may get squid again two nights in a row so well, yeah, far. Yeah, two nights in a row. We can go for three. Um, but we were meters. in the. Uh, we were at the south point, so maybe yeah. off the yeah. west is not as much squid. I don't know. But we are now at 219 meters, and our temperature is up to 15.8 degrees Celsius. Sorry, Dan, what were you saying there? I think I cut you off a bit. I don't think I said anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, would you like to say something? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, once again, it's, 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 it's always nice to do these dives. And uh, I think, you know, recovery is kind of a cool time to first reflect. Yeah. Reflect on what was your favorite part of the dive? Oh, I don't know. I, I got <laughs> the, the two, the, the beginning and the end, because when we popped down, it was just a tremendous scene. And, you know, just the geology that we were able to see. And then the end, the coral garden was just, you know, lots of diverse species, especially after, you know, an hour of coming up through silt and that kind of stuff. And then just being able to find yeah. two kind of cool things that one, that one boulder that. Or, yeah, you know, that, that boulder was really pretty with all that. And, and, and the little octopus that. Yeah came out for a little bit. I mean, that was one of the bucket list things was seeing a bucket. Who said octopus last night? Someone said they wanted to see an octopus. Oh, That's Dan, me. remember, I'm Dory, short-term memory loss. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yesterday feels like it was a week ago. That was on the list to see an octopus, and then we did. Bobbing along, bobbing along. Yeah, we're, along. we're almost uh, halfway through this expedition. We are. It's a kind of a sad <laughs> thought, actually. Yeah. I feel like just I'm just begun. finally getting into the swing of things, yeah. you know? So here's the, uh, um, a viewer gave us the link to the Discord live stream is HTTPS colon backslash backslash discord dot GG backslash capital Q P capital U, capital S, lowercase f, U, capital U, Q, J. We'll have to, we'll check that out. And another one is saying, happy Halloween, Eve, Eve, Eve. And that they're watching on their computer and Kindle. <laughs> oh, one of the viewers is saying that at the beginning was a bit scary because Atalanta almost smashed on the cliff. Yes. So that was a bit scary. It would have been a gentle boop. <laughs> no need to be dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Just a love tap. A <laughs> love tap. A boop. Boop. Sure, that's exactly what Dan likes to hear. <laughs> I booped Hercules. Yep. I keep waiting for fish. I'm constantly staring at that screen as it come up. Yeah, nothing yet. About halfway up. 140 meters left. It'd be really nice if one of the manta rays right outside. Oh man, I I would I mean, love to see that. a manta ray. This is a, this is the spot. This is the spot. So. And we're we're making out we're making light, so come on plankton, attract to Hercules, bring in those manta rays, everyone send manta ray thoughts to us. I think Hercules needs to be slapped by a manta ray, you know, I think he'll make his day. I don't know, Hercules has a pretty big knife. <laughs> <laughs> I think he well, has extra would, knives now, I doesn't doesn't he? <laughs> oh, there Are we is. looking? There's the view of the knife. <laughs> Just try me. <laughs> oh. I don't mess with Hercules. It's a god. Well, that's why we named it Hercules. <sighs> Who do I know? I can't remember my Discord login. That's that's a mistake. 
So are the big flakes uh, the zooplankton? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, there's probably. So they should be slumming no. up at this point, right? And not on the pole. Uh, yeah, so kind of think, like an upward migration. Do you think migration. because of the full moon, there's not going to be such? Yeah, you know. it depends. The full moon definitely affects yeah. certain things. Um, it affects lobsters a lot. I know that. It does. Yeah. How does it affect lobsters? They just they kind of stay hiding. They just stay in their caves all night rather than walk around. Too much light for them. Yeah, they're too vulnerable. It's time to fast. Yeah, even though they, they don't have a whole lot of predators other than us humans, but uh, sometimes yeah. you just don't want to go outside. Yep. I definitely notice a difference in an area where you have like a lot of spear fishermen, and when you go snorkeling yeah. around, the fish yeah. the fish aren't aren't dumb. They know like if you're f swimming on top, but once you dive down, and they like they get out of the way. But if you go in an area where you, there's it's protected and you don't have fishermen, fish don't swim away. You can dive down yeah. and see them and all that stuff. So they definitely act different depending on the area and how much. So they learn. I think so. Seems as if. It appears so is what I'm hearing. I've tried spear. Zach, have you ever spearfished before out here? Yeah, I, I actually spearfish quite a bit. Yeah. It's kind of like my yeah my hobby on the side. I've I've tried yeah. spearfishing with um, a spearfishing gun and then the three prong Hawaiian yeah. sling, and yeah. I feel like I I I just keep getting distracted by the fish. I'm like, oh, you're so yeah. pretty. I'm like, oh wait, I'm supposed to kill you. And then I, you know, I'm not a very yeah. good spear fisherman. Yeah, three pronging is uh, it's a great way to start. It teaches you a lot. Yeah. yeah, the the gun is definitely, I don't know. It, d it depends what you're going for, obviously. Yeah, but, I, uh, I have all my strengths in my legs, the upper body. So re-putting that yeah, band on them. the reloading yeah. them, it, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so Pushing it up, up against your chest to reload it. Yeah, we're coming up on 50 meters. We are. Here so we go. we're going to say good night, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your dive with us and check back in with us tomorrow. Good night, all. Good night. And good night. Seeing Hercules rise up in between the A-frame.
Control deck, can you have Hercules pull forward quarter thrust for five seconds? Copy that. Control, can you have Hercules pull forward at half, half thrust? Copy, coming forward at half thrust.
Control, deck, go ahead and have Hercules hold. Copy, holding. Control, control deck. Hercules is 10 meters from the transom. Copy, 10 meters from the transom. Control, control. Hercules is passing the transom. Copy. Control, control deck, we have Hercules out of the water. Copy. Back deck, power is secured. Copies, power secured.